At this time, I ask Mr. Robert Kinsel to step forward to receive his honorary degree. Class of <laughs> Robert Kinsel, class of 1995, international relations. You are a highly accomplished alumnus, global entertainment and technology executive, philanthropist, and engaged member of the SUNY New Paltz campus community. You joined Warner Music Group as chief executive officer in 2023, leading one of the largest music publishing, recording, and entertainment companies in the world. Last night at dinner, you shared you're in 45 countries across the globe. Most recently, you served as chief business officer at YouTube and spent 12 years with that platform where you played a central role in defining strategy and spearheaded the technology giant into a hub of content creation. Previously, you were vice president of content at Netflix and served in the company for seven years, becoming instrumental in the transition from a DVD by mail business into a streaming site for TV shows and movies. Earlier in your career, you worked in roles in, at HBO International and a talent agency. You are among the university's most engaged alumni, a renowned philanthropist, and you maintain an influential relationship with your alma mater. After establishing and renewing the Robert Kinsel and Luz Avila Kinsel Computer Science and Engineering Scholarship, um, along with your wife, you have supported underrepresented students aspiring to careers in STEM through academic tuition-based scholarships. In addition to these scholarships, yes, in addition to these um, programs, you've also had programs that led to success in the creation of the University Kinsel Scholars, a group of students who have been, been supported by the fund. They've achieved their educational goals and are building influential careers in their chosen fields. You were featured, you were a featured speaker for the university's Distinguished Speaker Series, which was one of the most widely attended events in the 15-year history of the series. Additionally, you participated in the President's Roundtable events. As an international student who first arrived on campus from the Czech Republic following the fall of the Iron Curtain, the university helped pave the way for your accomplishments. After graduation, you and your now wife moved to Los Angeles to pursue a business career in entertainment industry. Yet, even with all of your successes, the university remains close to your heart. In recognition of your life and career achievements, including a recognized leader in your field, your engagement and contributions to SUNY New Paltz and your position as one of our most accomplished alumni, today we celebrate you as the State University of New York bestows upon you the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. I would now like to ask our honoree to deliver his commencement address. Well, what a moment. <laughs> well, thank you, President Wheeler, the SUNY Board of Trustees, and everyone at SUNY New Paltz. I'm truly moved by to receive this honor today. You can probably hear it from my voice. Uh, Dr. Kinsel truly has a really nice ring to it. <laughs> Sounds like a proctologist. <laughs> the 
graduating class of 23. Amazing. Give yourself a round of applause, guys. <laughs> 28 years ago, I was sitting right where you're sitting today. And it was a bit of a blur for me, as I'm sure it is for you. So please make sure to take a moment and look around you and take a photo, but not with your phone, but with your mind. An indelible mental memory of this moment. Your fellow graduates, the professors who taught you, and the staff who supported you. The beautiful campus that's been your home and your families and friends who are celebrating you. My wife and I are both proud New Paltz graduates her in psych and me in international relations. And this school has changed our lives in so many ways. First, when I arrived at SUNY, I had moved, moved to this country from Czechoslovakia. The Soviet Union, Union just had collapsed. The last Soviet troops left the country and something that would have been unimaginable just a few years before. And during all of those years of communist rule, when I was a kid behind the Iron Curtain, there was no such thing as free press the media was state-owned, and it was long before uh, the uh, public access internet. So my main point of contact with the rest of the globe was tuning my transistor radio to Voice of America and catch Western rock, uh, like music like the Scorpions, Tears for Fears, Guns N' Roses, <laughs> etc. And I couldn't have imagined that today I would be running one of the world's biggest music companies. And if you don't know Warner Music Group, I'm sure you know some of our artists like Lizzo, Ed Sheeran, Dua Lipa, Cardi B, Coldplay, Bruno Mars, etc. It was my parents who really set me on this path. They had no way of knowing at that time, but the way they raised me and prepared me was for, for my life in America uh, was perfect with all of its opportunities and challenges. Above all, they strongly believed in education. <clears throat> In fact, my mom always said, they, they can take away everything you have, but no one can take away what's in your head. And she was right. As a new immigrant, I was a bit lost when I got here. I'm sure some of you as well. And it can be intimidating coming to a new school, let alone a new country. But New Paltz made me feel so welcome. I want to thank the incredible Alan Donevsky. He's practically a mass school mascot. He's right here, sitting over there. Alan gave me my first job in America, uh, running the athletic facilities over there. The second month when I arrived here, and I kept the job till the end, till, till graduation. I owe Alan tremendously a lot. One day at the Student Union building, I walked into the second floor conference room, and I saw the student sitting at a desk while further down there was a flurry of activity with a bunch of people preparing something. So I asked her, what's going on? What's, what are these people doing? And the first word that my future wife said to me were, I don't know, I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is a line that is a running joke of our 28-year-old marriage. <laughs> You make everything a fun adventure. You're an incredible and wonderful partner, amazing mother, a friend, and an amazing psychotherapist. You bring so much light into everyone's lives. I love you. The year that I graduated was 1995, has since been dubbed the year that changed everything. In that single year, Amazon, eBay, Windows 95, JavaScript, Internet Explorer, and USB ports were all introduced. It was all before the iPod and the iPhone, Gmail, Spotify, and most importantly, before, for my journey before Netflix and YouTube. I know, you all, uh, I know you all know plenty about change already, including during your time here, a pandemic and a national reckoning with social justice. And you're, uh, and, and you're stepped into a world where the pace of change is accelerating. It's impossible to imagine what the world will look like in 2050 when most of you will still be younger than I am today. So my message to you today is you can't predict the future, but you can prepare for its possibilities. 
And if you focus on how you prepare, not what you prepare, that's, then you have a much greater chance that you'll be ready for the unexpected. You might even enjoy it. My life is a great proof of that. After I left here in 95, I got my MBA at Pepperdine University in California. And my first job after school was at a talent agency in Los Angeles, working in the mailroom. I persevered and got a job at HBO. Then, 20 years ago, I took a job at Netflix, a booming business using mail order DVDs. But we looked at the data and saw the internet traffic exploding for videos. So I raised my hand and volunteered to figure out how to take Netflix into the streaming era. Uh, thanks. <laughs> There's some people like movies here. <laughs> I set about forging relationships with the Hollywood creative community and licensing films and TV shows directly. YouTube saw what we were doing and they approached me to help figure out their creative ecosystem. So while there, I championed the development of the YouTube Partner Program, which pays billions to millions of creators around the world, as well as launched the uh, launch of its paid subscription services like YouTube Music, YouTube Premium, and YouTube TV. And when I started, we had around 500 million active monthly users uh, and a lot of funny cat videos. <laughs> and when I left 12 years later, we had over 2 billion monthly users and around a third of all people using the internet across the globe. And it's the world's biggest and most advanced platform for visual content creation and distribution. Last year, I was approached about heading up the Warner Music Group. Music and tech have always gone hand in hand and were navigating the world of incredible opportunities and sizable challenges. So in hindsight, it may all look like a wonderful plan, but it's completely an illusion. What I had was an open mind and a flexible mind and a willingness to try. But along the way, I had a lot of self-doubt and a million sort of nerve-wracking decisions. Am I making the right move? Is this the right opportunity? And guess what? Now, as a CEO of a publicly traded company with responsibility for 6,000 employees and thousands of artists and songwriters, I still doubt myself a lot today, maybe even more. That's when I seek out people I trust and take their counsel. It's also when I learn the most. My wife and I have two extraordinary daughters, Isabella and Adriana, who are half Czech and half Dominican. And they're smarter, worldlier, and more inquisitive than we were at their age. They're our pride and joy, and they're here with us today. It makes this especially emotional for me because they're basically the same generation as many of you. So, so uh, I have some sense of what you're going through today. I know that some, some of you are focused on grad school and some of you have a job lined up and some of you have no idea. And yet all of that is okay. I had absolutely no idea myself at that time. As with any big change like this, there's tension. It's both an end and a beginning. And that sense of achievement and anxiety at the same time. Remember, I graduated in a year that changed everything, and the pace of change was unrelenting. It's possible that 20 years from now, we'll look back at 2023 as the year that changed everything again because of artificial intelligence. Change will be even faster the next 28 years than it was the, in the past ones. And that tension that you feel today is something that you will feel many times in the future. And it's healthy. Lean into that tension because it means that there are many new possibilities ahead of you. Now, I want you to write a caption for that mental picture that I asked you to take earlier. Promise yourself, I'll keep an open mind, an open heart, and an open spirit. Maintain space in your life for uncertainty and lean into it. Get good at it. That's what will make you successful at work, and that's what makes life beautiful and exciting. The not knowing, the exploring, the finding out. The realization that what was once unimaginable, it is now your life. Go get it. Thank you.